Hi, and welcome to CMPP's Speakers for Schools programme. My name's Rachel, and today I'm going to be chatting to Dominic Osborne. Now, Dominic is the FBO Director um, at Farnborough Airport. So we're going to find out what that is, what he does, and how we got to where he is today. So hi, Dominic. Good morning. Dominic, tell us then what an FBO Director is. So I work at Farnborough Airport, as you said. So it's, uh, it stands for fixed based operator. So principally, as you know, we're a, a business airport, a private airport. Um, and the FBO director, which is my role, um, looks after the terminal. Um, it also looks after the ground handling team. So all those guys, so for example, if they're refueling aircraft, pushing air uh, aircraft into position, parking aircraft, towing them. So all the things that happen out on the ramp that you might see on a, on a normal commercial airport, we do here, uh, and that, that's part of my role here. And then from a terminal point of view, our terminal is, is uh, to accommodate our crew, which are really important to us, and obviously our passengers, which are very important to us. So all the things that passengers will go through uh, in a normal terminal, at, at say Heathrow or something, they have that in a slightly smaller scale and maybe a slightly grander scale here at Farnborough. Um, so the, 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 that's sort of the key instruments of my role. We also um, take flight reservations, so we do a lot of flight planning, for example. Um, and then we liaise with uh, the UK immigration uh, and the police that are on site here. And then all the other services that are, that are incorporated within our, within our airport. So that's kind of what the role entails. I mean, you must see some great airplane. You know, obviously we know Farnborough is private jets coming through Farnborough as well. I mean, you must see some great planes coming in and any famous people that you've um, there's a few and obviously we, we, we can't comment but um but no we we do get a few and, and the advantage of business aviation is that you can you can come in and so whereby if you were coming in into a commercial airport you'd have to go through immigration here immigration services come out to your aircraft and do all the checks you can then you know leave your aircraft into your vehicle and then leave the airport on your way on your onward journey so what we try and do is make it a really really smooth and, and uh, efficient transition from coming in and to, le to leaving on, on, on both sets. So, um, and there's no particular time that you have to leave. So if you're quite happy having a cup of coffee or on the store, still on the phone before you leave, you, you can wait a few minutes more or less. So, you know, from that point of view, um, we try and accommodate all those requests to make this a really, really quality seamless journey. So, but yes, we do. And we get um, quite a lot of sports teams coming through our doors as well. I suppose certainly in the, in, in the current circumstances. So it's a really good mix of, of um, you know, private travellers, people travelling for business. Um, and as I'm sure when the restrictions are lifted, we should see a really good uh, amount of traffic coming through of people wanting to, to go and explore the world again. So um, we're looking forward to that. And so tell us then how you got to your position, because you haven't always worked at the airport. But let's go back to when you um, left school. What did you do when you left school? Um, so I left school and went to university um, and I wanted to read American history uh, at uh, Kent University. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So uh, I didn't quite make the grades, so I'll be honest. So um, I, I managed to get onto a vocational uh, degree, vocational qualification. So that was hotel and catering business management. So uh, a four year course, with a year out in industry, which is which is absolutely fantastic. Um, so a, a practical course, but also business. So we just we 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 studied law and economics and, and the management styles and so on and so forth. So I kind of fell into that by accident, <clears throat> and then spent the good part of twenty years, twenty five years in hospitality. Um, so I worked my way up to general manager. I was general manager just at the age of thirty, and I've worked from you know. Uh, city centre hotels in London, country house hotels, hotels that are privately owned. Um, I've opened hotels from scratch um, and, you know, I've also repositioned hotels to so close them and, and rebranded them. So I've had a really good experience in hospitality. Um, and as you may know, Farnborough Airport also operates the Aviator Hotel in Farnborough. So that was my last position in hospitality. Um, I had a really amazing four years there. Um, and then the opportunity came up to, to to come across to the airport. So, you know, you're never too old to to transfer your skills to a different industry. And because the DNA of what we do in in so many things in terms of, 
of management style and how we process things and decision making and and how we interact with people and, and all that sort of relationship management it, it's it's very similar from industry to industry so yes i've had to learn a huge amount of technical uh new technical information for sure um but uh you know the strengths and the core skills that you develop across your career they're pretty transferable across industry so that that's uh, that certainly helped me so going back to the hotel and catering business management you did at, at university did you enjoy doing that you said that wasn't really what you wanted to do um it wasn't but i fell in love with it pretty quickly um and um what it did i, I chose that course because it gave us a really good business management foundation yeah. Um, so it gave me the opportunity to explore those elements um, of, of, of sort of business management. Um, and, you know, the practical side was was fun. It was enjoyable. You know, it's very engaging industry hospitality. Um, you know, you're, you're engaging with, with people, both from a customer point of view, from a supplier point of view, and then your colleagues in the business. So it was really good for, you know, if you're a social person, that, would, that was a real big tick for me. Um, and... You know, I love the camaraderie of the business. I love the, the fact that the hotel business was was always cutting edge, looking to move, move with the times. Um, you have this freedom to be able to express yourself in certain setups that, um, you know, you want to juice new service standards or um, <clears throat> new technology for guests, whatever they might be, that you had that foundation to do so. Um, but the important thing is, is just, just that ability to really make somebody stay and just deliver great service you know and that's what we're all about hospitality um, and as i sort of grew older as i became more senior within the organization then i guess your mindset changes a little bit and then it's more about the business focus and it's about your people and developing a really great culture to work in that's really really important um, <clears throat> so well-being obviously that's become a really buzzword good buzzword over the last few years and and that was yeah. certainly been very prevalent um, but <clears throat> so you have to drive the business for your owners ultimately they want to make sure they're getting a return on that um, <clears throat> you're looking ahead maybe on a five-year strategy about where the business will be uh, and help that owner achieve those goals um, but also at the back of your mind and in fact the forefront of your mind sitting alongside that is just making sure that we seamlessly deliver brilliant customer service and make it a really great experience for people because that's why people come and visit hotels, even if they're on leisure or they're on business, they're still coming for a great experience. So, um, <clears throat> so I guess as, 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 as you um, proceed through the ranks and you develop um, through your career, um, then there'll be different focuses at different time. Um, but uh, the, the magic is to, to never let anything go and actually just blend them all together and make sure you're giving all of those elements that are important to you uh, equal equal standing so um but you know great fun great fun great great industry and if i don't go back um you know i, I left one of the best in the business aviator you know if that's the last hotel i work in then wow what a way to finish yeah and it is an amazing it must be really nice working in an amazing hotel like that for anyone that lives in the area it's a it's a lovely lovely play yeah mm. and so what excuse my naivety a little bit what's to getting into hotel and catering is that very different to like leisure and tourism for anybody that might be interested in going down those routes or what's the difference i think that there is similarity in terms of you know ultimately you've still got a customer that you're looking to to, to deliver a great experience for um hotels hotels is such a varied career i mean if, if you look at the aviator for example there's probably 10 or 15 different roles that you, you could take or departments and then roles within that department. So, you know, from marketing or finance, um, you know, the front office, the housekeeping, the restaurant, the back of house, um, you know, you know, in bigger estates, you've got gardeners and estate management. So there's a huge amount of diversity within the roles there. Um, probably similar to leisure and tourism, but uh, I, I, from a hotel um, point of view, um, that opportunity to, to maybe seamlessly move through um, the hotel in, in different parts of the business um, is great because it gives you a great foundation for, for um, career development. Yeah. I'm sure that's the same as leisure and tourism yeah. um, <clears throat> as well. So, you know, it, it is probably, you know, we, we see it here that there are um, people in aviation, 
here that have worked in hospitality. Um, some of my customer service team here, they've worked in hospitality. I've got some here that worked in commercial airports, Heathrow, for example. So <clears throat> there is a lot of crossover between leisure, tourism, mm. aviation, uh, hotels, because the core strengths and skills you need are very similar, like any business, really. Um, so <clears throat> the, the good thing about hospitality, and I'm an example of that, I guess, is that you know you can cross in between different industries. Um, yeah. And I think it's rare now that people stay in the same industry across their whole career, uh, unless maybe you're a doctor or a dentist or something, or yeah, you know. But but it, it, outside of, of those sort of um, traditional um, careers, there's a lot more uh, stepping in between industry because often you'll have those skills that can you can transfer across. So that's very important. Transferable skills. Is really yeah. yeah. And so what have you then found most difficult in your career so far, do you think? Um, <clears throat> sometimes you choose, choose employers that aren't, you know, right for you. So you, you're going to make mistakes. Um, and, and, and don't be put off by those mistakes because you learn a huge amount from them. Um, so I think that that's quite important. Um, you're going to have knockbacks. You're going to have days when you think, well, you know, is this all worth it? Um, but you, you work through those days because um, it gives you a real appetite for, to, for, to succeed. So, you know, I, I've, I've, I've had hotels that are flooded um, and, you know, I've had hotels that um, have suffered, um, you know, through, through fire on the estate, not in the hotel itself. So, um, what you tend to deal with, you tend to, to deal with a lot of things um, and um, it's about how you respond to that. And you look back and think, wow, we did a great job. You know, you know, we had to more or less close the hotel for three days. We were open back up or, or we had to completely change our way of working to accommodate the guests and make sure that they weren't impacted. All these kind of things that, that go on, you, you take a lot of pleasure and enjoyment from. So um, if you want a challenge, this, yeah, absolutely. Hospitality. Yeah. Um, great place to be. Great place to be. Then what, what have you found most rewarding? Is there anything specific that you can think of that you found most rewarding? Uh, it, it is about making experiences. It's, it's, it's about delivering that brilliant service and getting that feedback. Um, and I've, you know, often hark back to um, you know, people who became friends of mine, actually, that we didn't deliver a great service to in, in a hotel I worked at. And you know, we had our hands up, ha held our hands up and admitted that. And we got them back. And, and, and literally, the, from there on in, they were with us two or three times a year. They had weddings with us, birthday parties, celebrations. Um, they become very, very close friends. So the ability to turn a negative to a positive is a really big tick. I think that's, that's great, because we don't always get it right all the time. But that's, that's a real thrill. Um, and I think also seeing people, nurturing people and seeing them develop in, in, in your organization is, is great as well. I think that's, uh, so, you know, very, very proud of <clears throat> making sure that whatever culture you have is that no matter how age you are, what stage of career you are in or at, that if you want to develop, we make sure that you can be developed so you can be the best you can be. Even if that means letting people go onto bigger and better things, you know, then it's our, that that's the right thing to do. So, you know, that's incredibly important, you know, training and development for our people. But also there's a sense of achievement when you hit the budget numbers, you know, when maybe you win an award, when you've done something great, when you've, you know, invested a huge amount of money into a project and, and opened it and sit back. I've opened a hotel, you know, a couple of hotels, as I said, and, you know, <clears throat> from, from literally sticks in the ground to a, to a 180 bedroom hotel overlooking a stadium with a golf course and a spa and everything else. Oh, wow. And you, you get, I've lost two years of my life, but wow. But when we opened that door, it was just, um, you know, phenomenal. So um, lots of different ones and, and they're probably more important to people at different times of their, of their careers. But um, yeah, hospitality gives them an opportunity to have those moments. And what does your future hold then? Where do you think you want to be in the future? Where do you see yourself? Well, I'm, I'm really comfortable sitting out here looking at Farnborough Airport. Can't wait for the uh, for the business to return. And, uh, you know, I've been here nine months and, and we've kind of been impacted by what's been going on, obviously. So, um, 
yeah, we're just we're just gearing ourselves up to to, to welcoming people back and, and providing that service. That's, that's me for the next uh, you know period of time for sure. So really exciting, um, and you know, look, I, I'm still learning now. I've, you know, I'm in a new industry, so huge amount of learning to do, uh, which is exciting. I'm surrounded by some amazing people here who give up their time to help me through the. They're very patient with me. Um, when your brain is wired for one industry and then after 25 years you move, it takes a little bit of time for it to, to rewire into something else. Um, but that's, you know, that's, that's part of the fun. That's part of the fun. So, you know, it's good to be challenged. But uh, yeah. yeah, very exciting future ahead. And it's lovely up there. Have you got a nice view of the uh, airport out there? I'm seeing an airplane come in now and I'm seeing the guy marshal it in and so I know now I can I can sit out on the apron and and watch these guys at work and they make it look so nice easy. um yeah and um there's so much hard work that goes in behind it across all yeah the, across all the business but yeah it's 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 a fabulous place to be fabulous place to work so I'm, you know, I'm really proud of of, uh, of being here and, and can't wait for as I said things to return to normal and um Finally, then, have you got any advice for anybody wanting to start out in the aviation or the hotel industry or just making their choices at schools, even if it's not related to those subjects? It's, it's uh, I mean, I, I talked with, you know, a, from a position where I wanted to do something and didn't, I'm not doing it and ended up loving what I'm doing now. So, um, I mean, follow your passion, I think is really important. Um, you know, if you're passionate about something, have a look at it. Um, it's never too early to build a network. <clears throat> so if you, you know, you have that opportunity to build networks, uh, you know, I've countless times I've fallen back on my network over the years. Um, so that that's really quite important. Never too early to start those relationships and making that good impression because you never know what it might be uh, come in handy. Um, but don't be prepared to, you know, or be prepared. Don't be scared of failure. Don't be scared of things don't work out. You know, we're in work a long time and you are going to get knocked back. So, you know, from that point, the decisions you make now, you know, may not be your future path in 10, 15, 20 years time, but just make most of those experiences as you go. Because um, then you know, you'll end up, you know, in that right career, that right sweet spot of a job that you, you've always wanted. But you might have some, some you know, rough roads on, on the way there because it's, it's not a smooth journey. Um, and uh, so just, but, you know, don't give up. And that's, that's great, great advice. And it's really nice to hear that, yeah, you, you didn't start out doing exactly what you wanted to do, but you really, really enjoy what you do do now. And I think that's brilliant advice for, for people who are just a bit unsure about what, where, what route they want to take at the moment. So thank you for that. Yeah, uh, no, and thank you. Thank you so much for your time. That's been brilliant. So thank you. Rachel, thank you very much.